Since Jay Powell uh, questioned neutral rates on October 3rd, the Dow has shed more than 3,000 points. And that's something Charles Payne's talked a lot about on this show. So what about from here on out and the volatility that we've been seeing? Does it just continue or do, does something that's said or done tomorrow maybe put an end to it or slow it down or make it worse? Ryan Payne joins us from Payne Capital Management and Jeffrey Cleveland does as well, Chief Economist for Payton and Rigel Investment Management. I'll start, Jeffrey, with you on that, on this issue of... You know, that is true that since the, that infamous or famous Jay Powell uh, remarks, we've had some ride in these in these markets. Does that uh, continue or is the Fed kind of getting a grip on it? It could go either way, I think. You know, the bond market, if you look at what's priced in, the bond market is OK with one more hike. But pretty much nothing is priced in for 2019. Mm -hmm. And if tomorrow they do hike, yet they still stick to three rate hikes in their 2019 outlook, I mean, I think that could ruffle some feathers in the, in the marketplace because that means we, we still have a few more hikes to go. Uh, the bond market has something very different in mind. So that right. tension there, I think, is important to note. So in your view then, Ryan, what is leading to all of this volatility in markets? If you, you, you could say it's the Federal Reserve or the China trade, or you could look, there's an interview on the wires now because Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, talked to to Bloomberg News in, in Washington today, he says it's the high-frequency traders, among other things. So what is it? What's happening? I think you're just getting panic at this point. I mean, look, we know the economy is pretty strong right now, right? There's no real news out there that says that this economy is falling off a cliff. I went shopping at Macy's the other day. I mean, it was jammed. Yeah. Um, I was at the dinner last night. The restaurants were jammed. I mean, the economy looks pretty good. The outlook is the concern, <clears throat> though. And if the Federal Reserve says what John Hilsenrath says they're likely to say is that, hey, we raise one more time, but we're done for a while. How do we take that? I think that could be pretty bullish. I mean, I think right now, look, I mean, uh, Jay Powell has to f save face tomorrow. I think he has to raise no matter what. Odds are about 70%. Yeah. But I think going into next year, if he could be just a little bit dovish with his language, that could be one helpful catalyst to finally start to turn this market around. If, Jeffrey, the president was taken out of the equation, and that's kind of the journal's point this morning, would this be the time to pause? I mean, and Ryan might be right. Maybe he's got to hike no matter what just because he's basically going to do what he said he was going to do. But would this be the time to pause? The first thing I would say is if, if I'm advising the president, I would say, President Trump, stop talking about the Fed it's in talk instead about the economic data, with, which looks excellent. You have growth at 3% here through Q4. The unemployment rate probably in a year's time will be low threes, maybe 3.2. Right. You know, that's the story. Well, the president's in, point, whether you agree or disagree with the, you know, the way he's going about it, his point is like, hey, you're going to ruin all this, uh, Jay Powell. He's not, it's, it's, it's not going to ruin it. The reason they're hiking, and he can turn that around and say they're hiking because the economy is so strong it can withstand higher rates, which, which I think right. it can. So I think that's how I would, I would phrase this. Uh, could they find an excuse to pause? Your other question. Yeah. Yes. We've seen the Fed, when financial markets are volatile, they've used that as an excuse to stay on the sidelines. The most notable recent would be September 2016. Mm -hmm. A lot of market participants thought that a rate hike was telegraphed there. They chose to delay there, and they instead hiked December of that year, as you recall. You know, be so they, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jeffrey, but before we wrap this up, I just want to broaden it slightly, the discussion, and just mention, Ryan, that the market has come way off the highs today, right, again. So uh, as we're up, we're up only 50 points on the Dow, S&P's actually down. So it, yep. it, it's something we brought up at the top even of this hour is that for the bounce back rally that we had been seeing and now is fading, it didn't seem like the sentiment had changed much. A lot of negativity out there. So Yeah, I saw statistically last week get $81 billion go to money market funds, uh, which the, like, that's the biggest number since 1992. So I think we're definitely in Essentially panic mode saying, right now. you know, I got to be in cash so for, for all intents and purposes. I got to be as safe as I possibly can. Exactly. Yeah. Sentiment is extremely negative right now. So you're going to need some catalyst out there to turn the ship around. And I think probably something about interest rates. Um, some kind of trade deal with China, those kind of things could really turn this thing around, you know, on a dime. And that's typically how it happens. And I'm not uh, blaming him for this sell-off, but, you know, if you listen <laughs> to Michael Pillsbury a few minutes ago, not very optimistic about the Chinese thing, at least for now.